welcome to the review of Deadly Sins and Other Bizarre Songs by Taff Carl. Taff Carl standing for the artist formerly known as Lyra Ray Wynn. Now, Lyra Ray Wynn first came out onto the hip-hop scene with his first mixtape, Chrissy Bacon and Other Odd Songs, in August 2013. And his second one, his follow-up, came four months later on January 1st, 2014. And that's Deadly Sins and Other Bizarre Songs. Uh, it's uh, better than I had thought it was when I, like, I had listened to it before when it first came out and I thought it was good. But then I felt like it was going to be not as good after the years progressed. But it's surprisingly decent. It's better than I thought. It's held up more than I better than I anticipated. And the one vast improvement over Deadly Sins over Crispy Bacon is that in Deadly Sins, he does not sing over other people's songs. I mean, he just uses instrumentals. There's no singing over the actual song with the artist still singing on it, which is a good improvement. The recording process is the same. He's still using a Philips Go Gear area or, or whatever it's called. It's just an old Philips MP3 player he uses to record. Uh, and it, it's he's doing it like it before. He doesn't have any pauses, you know. I mean, well, he can't pause it, he can't re-record it, he can't put it together. It's all one take for each track. He plays the track, the music track, the, the beat, the instrumental, and then he raps to it. And uh, that's how he records it still. Uh, so if there's a couple times, you know, he messes up, he stumbles. But not as much. I, I feel like it's less. He messes up less. He does better at rapping all at once in one take than he did in Crispy Bacon. But sometimes, from track to track, the sound is varies, and it's something needs to keep consistent. Is like one track will be loud, and the next track will be quiet, and they need to stay about the same on this, the sound, on how loud it is. And uh, there's only one a cappella song, and then uh, four beats come from video games, even. Uh, less parodies on this project, but the... Raps still have a sense of humor, but it's more like he, he isn't trying to do a direct parody of the stuff. Uh, going Starting off the track, um, starting off the first track is Greed, which is a, a, to the beat of Tyler Creator's Domo 23, which it's pretty good. I mean, it gets it's a really hype song. It gets you hyped up for the rest of the mixtape. Um, and then at the end... He says, uh, nada es gratis, soy muy codicioso. He says, uh, nothing's for free. And then he says, I'm very greedy. And he says, soy, mu soy muy codicioso multiple times at the end of the track. But he's yelling and screaming it so much that it almost sounds like he's possessed when he's uh, speaking in Spanish at the end of the track. It's pretty good. Uh, then it goes into Gluttony, which uh, is a pretty good track. Uh, and it proves that he really likes to eat. But it's a, it's a good song it's to the beat of a Young Money song. Uh, Sloth is a good representation of Sloth. It's like him, he's like talking about how he doesn't really feel like rapping right now. But it doesn't have much replay value, but Sloth is decent the first time you hear it. And then in Raph, uh, it uses music from the Sega Genesis game Chacon. Uh, and it, uh, this song is more like the lyrics are spread out. There's more like just pauses of no um, vocal performance when it's just the music from Chacon, the video game, which is a little bit different from Crispy Bacon. I felt like almost all of it was all together, like all the raps were all together. There was no like break in it. So that's interesting, just using the silence a little bit, just letting the instrument play. Uh, and then another thing, like in a lot of the songs, uh, especially in Sloth and Wrath, and then I think it was Gas Snake, you can hear like Taff Carl's pet bird chirping, which is kind of funny. And even in Sloth, he even makes mention of that in the song. Because the bird starts chirping and he's like, oh, what? You want to rap instead of me? It's kind of funny. Uh, but kind of like why you should record somewhere where there isn't a bird so it wouldn't interrupt you. But I liked how he just played it off on Sloth. It's pretty good. Then uh, after Wrath is Pride. It has a cool hook. If uh, Taff Carl flows well on the Chum instrumental, uh, Chum is a song by Earl Sweatshirt, uh, and kind of lets you know who he is. 
I feel like all of the Seven Deadly Sin songs let you know Taff Girl's personality better. Uh, it, and there's like a lot of references to comics and video games, especially Full Metal Alchemist. I'm supposing Full Metal Alchemist probably made him think of doing the a song for each of the Deadly Sins because Envy, uh, it was actually Envy, the beat for Envy was actually made, the beat was made using Mario Paint for Super Nintendo. So, uh, it's not going to sound great. It's just, you know, Mario Paint. But, uh, it was, it's kind of annoying. The beat's kind of annoying, but it's not as bad as you would expect. And then Lust, uh, is to Tyler Creator's song Rusty, that's the instrument he uses for it, and he has a lot of good bars in it, it's like bar after bar that's funny, and it's, it's a really funny look at why Taff Carl uh, is single, I guess, it's kind, of, it's kind of funny, it's ironic, kind of makes fun of himself, kind of self-deprecating humor. Uh, Lust, it just goes into, and the other bizarre songs part of Deadly Sins and Other Bizarre Songs, it starts off with Santa Claus. Uh, Taff Carl's attempt at making a holiday classic, and it's to the beat of Upper Echelon by Travis Scott. Uh, the hook is pretty catchy. It's like, hitch up the reindeers, pull out the sleigh. I'm so lazy that I only work one day. And since it's on Christmas, I expect holiday pay. That's right. Yeah, I'm Santa Claus. So it, it, uh, it's kind of a catchy hook. Uh, the verses are pretty good, though there is one mistake that Taff Coral makes that kind of is annoying because uh, I think it be I believe it's on the second verse of Santa Claus he says Rudolph and Tony Tony Chopper a character from One Piece who has a blue nose who's a reindeer are ga guiding m his sleigh with a light that's green Rudolph has a red nose Tony Tony Chopper has a blue nose red plus blue doesn't make green obviously Taff Coral failed his art class uh, it would be purple he should be guided by a light that's purple. But for the sake of the rap, he said green and maybe he didn't realize that he had made a mistake. But uh, his art grade probably isn't that great. And then it goes into, I need to take a poop. Um, Crispy Bacon, he had a song called Pooping Problems and now he has a song about I need to take a poop. What's his fascination with defecation? Uh, but he did a good job crafting three stories for each of the verses to explain why he needs to take a poop. It's a uh, good song. I, I, think it, I think it was a good song. Uh, but I just think it's funny that this guy's making songs about poop. Uh, then he goes into Laundromat, which is a terrible song. It shouldn't have been on the album. Uh, it's got to be the worst track. And then it goes into If You're Nerdy and You Know It, which is a parody of If You're Happy and You Know It. And it's uh, kind of funny. It's not very memorable. Probably second more track. Uh, then it goes into Gas Snake, which has a long intro. It doesn't. It's like more than a minute before Taff Carl actually starts rapping. Uh, he really describes Metal Gear Solid well. Uh, it's a good description of the game. Uh, if you never played it, you'll get a good sense of what it's about. You'll even have some spoilers probably. Uh, and it uses. Music from Castlevania Symphony of the Night on PlayStation as the beat for it, which is pretty cool. Uh, and uh, the vocal performance is quite animated on Gas Snake. There's parts when he's like, and shot! You know, like he like really just gets into it. And then it goes into Eddie Wong, which is a completely fictitious song telling a what-if scenario. Uh, and it just, I, I, I feel like most people wouldn't like the song. But it's kind of a joke I had with, well, ooh, well <coughs> excuse me, uh, Taff Carl, uh, I don't know what I was talking about, uh, uh, a joke Taff Carl had with his mother. And it shows, displays Taff Carl's storytelling ability. And then it goes into I Had a Job Part 2. Uh, I Had a Job was a song off of um, Crispy Bacon that was explaining, uh, it was basically just him angry Larry Wynn being angry about losing his job at Little Caesars. But why would you have to make a second part? It's just a job at a pizza place. You need to really get over it, Taff Carl. You need to get over it. But, I must admit, it's a decent diss track. He's, he's, he's getting better at making diss tracks. I would, I would definitely say that. The last song, the closing track, is Inner Trevor Scott, 
which really, uh, it's not that great of a closer, it's not that great of a track, it's probably maybe the third weakest song on here, or maybe I Had a Job Part 2 is the third weakest song, I'm not for sure. But it, he, he put good references from songs from both of his mixtapes and the mixtapes within it. Uh, he, he kept saying his name was, saying his name, which was kind of weird, it's like kind of repetitive. So I would say the best tracks on Deadly Sins and other bizarre songs are Greed, Lust, Santa Claus, and I Need to Take a Poop, and probably Gas Snake. And then I will definitely say the worst tracks by far are The Laundromat and If You're Nerdy and You Know It are the worst tracks. I would say uh, Second Effort, it was alright. He improved on a couple things, but I just feel like he was not as inspired as he was on Crispy Bacon. So I'm going to give Taft Carl's Deadly Sins and Other Bizarre Songs a score of 4 out of 10. 4 out of 10.